Hey guys, KG5I in here. I just wanted to show you the setup of my ham radio stuff. Uh, kind of what I've been doing recently and uh, what I'll be doing in the future and all that stuff. Uh, basically what you see here is the DR1X repeater. This was a refurb unit from Yesu. Uh, I think it was about 400 bucks for this thing. And then, you know, everything's set up with the wires X. It's got the HR, HRI 200 attached to a laptop. This was an old uh, broken laptop that I was able to pop a hard drive in for about 30 bucks, you know, and kind of get it going. I'll put a Windows 7 OS on it. So that's what this runs right now. Uh, for some reason right now it's not working properly, so I'm still trying to work on the uh, configurations and figure out exactly what's going on. I don't know if it's something to do with the communication with the HRI or if it has anything to do with the, the repeater, but you know, I had sent this in for a repair because I put a different firmware version and bricked it. So I sent it to Yesu. They fixed it and sent it back to me uh, without charging a dime. So that was really awesome of them. Um, I recommend definitely using them for pretty much most of their, most or all of their radios. They all uh, seem to be working really well for me and I haven't had any issues whatsoever. Anyways, um, and I'm not sponsored by them or anything like that so don't take it like that whatsoever. <laughs> so it's a full size network rack. It's actually on wheels. I've got my drill and clippers and all that stuff because I've been cutting zip ties and those actually work really well for that. <laughs> There's other cutters, of course, but they get in there real nice, you know, and they snip it off real easy like butter. Uh, so I've got the DR1X here mounted. I also have a shelf and the laptop sitting on the shelf, so no weight's actually added to the DR1X. I have a uh, Bay of Fang UV5R sitting here. This is what I use to test uh, when I'm trying to test the connections. And then, of course, you know, everything else right there. And if you look over here, I've got a network cable that goes on over to the network rack. Um, if you look right in here, I have two lines coming out. One of these goes into the duplexer for the high, and then one goes in for the low, which is a receive and uh, transmit. And of course you see this thicker wire right here. It's kind of loops down back up through the back side of it up and over way up at the top of the attic and what I did is I drilled a hole through the exhaust drain pipe and that goes down into the kids bathroom and then I stuck the you know the wire in there and I fed it all the way up and out the top of the pipe I mounted my antenna to the top of the, the top of the pipe and then of course I created a drip loop then back up through the hole so the wire goes like this it comes down inside the pipe loops back up a little bit then comes back out of the hole Then I took and I sealed the hole off so no water when it rains and I mean you've got a two inch diameter hole just imagine if it was just a torrential rain not a whole lot of water actually collects in there, you know, and drips through that. So, even if there was a lot of water, it's dripping down through the drip loop. It's not really collecting and going inside. Plus, it's already sealed, so there's no chance of water coming back in. And plus, the antenna is mounted at the highest peak. So, you know, if you guys wanted to try that, I'd say go for it. Give it a shot. The only thing is, it's not a very heavy antenna, so... You know, you're using PV, it's mounted to PVC, and it looks just like this. And imagine it going all the way up, and imagine you have a little hole drilled on the side of that, where the wire runs through and goes all the way up inside of it, coming out the top. That way you don't have any other points of entry for water and stuff like that to leak into the house. But the good part is, this whole thing, the way it's all set up is, it, it allows you to be able to run the antenna on there. It's a real light uh, diamond, uh, I forget the exact model number, it's like a 30, It's a, it's got its own little ground plane with uh, three little um, stainless steel wires coming off of it, so 
you know you don't have to ground it out and all that stuff um, and it works fantastic uh, I get out about 25 30 miles um, pretty easily so it seems to work out well anyways um, over here is the the network rack and if you give me a second I'll go ahead and plug in a light so we can actually see it a little bit better you know being in an attic you don't have a bunch of light sources but if I kind of work my way over here plug this baby in and flip the oh wrong wrong power supply I was like uh oh I hope I didn't trip any breakers but then of course I would have heard the battery back up beeping there we go okay so now I've got that all plugged in. Go ahead and power this on. Extremely bright. Okay, so now you can kind of see the network rack a little better. Uh, if you open up here, I've got my camera system. It's a 16 channel real link. It's got a three terabyte hard drive built into it. Then I went ahead and added uh, two six terabyte hard drives. So now I have 12 terabytes of storage space going in there. Um, if you look at all the cables here, obviously that's all, you know, network stuff, which includes Wi-Fi hard lines going into the uh, into different areas of the house. I hardline most of my most of my Sonos uh, speakers, my surround system, my Xbox, and things like that. Hardline the uh, TV downstairs. Um, right here, you know, I've got a it's a PoE switch, uh, Unify PoE, 16 channel. I mean, yeah, sorry, 16. So I can plug in a lot of things on it. Um, then of course I've got the controller. This right here is what allows you to be able to make any configuration changes to your Wi-Fi, to your switch, to your uh, firewall. So this right here is the firewall. It's a Unify USG firewall. Um, this is the main internet line coming in. This is the main line going to the switch to port 1. This comes out of port 2 for the controller. Let me get some uh, double stick tape so I can stick it on the unit like this so it'll look a little neater. Um, a power conditioner, old conditioner which was uh, basically it was dead. So I took it apart, figured out what it was. It was a solder joint that gotten came loose and I soldered it back together and now it still works. Of course it doesn't have the indicator light showing that it's on <laughs> but it none of this stuff would be on if that wasn't working. And then, of course, I've got a little power strip to add a few more devices, which goes down underneath and plugs into the battery backup, which plugs into the outlet, which is an outlet that I installed. Uh, so I did that. I'm actually coming off of another outlet over here, but there's nothing plugged into that outlet except for that light switch there. So it's not a bunch of power being drawn on that anyway, so it's not like it's going to be a, a deal killer there, you know? Um, I don't have any trouble with it tripping or anything like that but so this is the whole network setup I have a VGA cable coming out for the uh, camera system so I can hook up a monitor out here um, that'll be for that uh, so there's there's that whole setup basically so that's kind of what it looks like from the side this is you know, of course, the computer like I was talking about, and the repeater, and then I'll show you some of the uh, APs that are mounted throughout the house, so you can kind of see how those look. Okay, as I walk through the hallway, you'll see I've got a Unify AP mounted up here. Uh, I get some light. Don't know if that helps, but this is the Unify AP AC Pro. Uh, it's a smaller one. Of the two that, or of the other that I have, um, and this right here is mounted up above the flex room, which is my office area. There's the entryway, 
and anyways so it sits right above that this is the, the front door area that goes outside to the front of the house so it's on the opposite end of the house get pretty good coverage now I know it seems a little messy but right here I've got the uh, you know my theater area I guess I've got the uh, sound bar from Sonos that thing is really nice I've got that hard lined with a cat 5 that comes out of the back of it I know you can't see very well in the back here um, but then I've got a 55 inch TV attached to it the subwoofer the Sonos sub right there that thing I mean it feels like an earthquake in the house when this plays for how small it is and for how powerful it is um, man I would, I would I would love to have another one of those um, just so I when I build the uh, theater room I'm actually going to move it in there but I would love to have one of those somewhere else in the house add a little more base to it got my Xbox with the uh, you know another power conditioner that I fixed uh, that was also dead another broken uh, solder joint on that so that that was easy to fix the light actually works on it and then of course if you look right here right there is a four terabyte external hard drive that's where I keep all my backups and uh, and of course I have my uh, kids messy area got a couch there with a Sonos speaker there that's hard lined as well with a cat 5 and another one on this side and it provides a real nice uh, sound in this whole area uh, the ring alarm system right here that right there makes really loud noises when it goes off it's very loud it wake up everybody and I'll head downstairs and show you the other AP setup okay so downstairs there's the other uh, Wi-Fi access point this is a Unify AP HD Pro Wave 2 um, right above this attic area is that uh, one spot to the right of the network rack that you saw the the one that's mounted to the wall and then the cable runs runs up and over like this you got your network rack up here this right here is just an empty space above this area and then to the left the left over here you're gonna have your uh, bathroom and stuff like that and that's where that's mounted and that provides Wi-Fi throughout the kitchen area and the rest of the living room and the back side of the house which is the master master bed area stuff like that seems just a little messy in here but i'm cleaning up this right here is another sonos speaker uh this is you know where the flex room is that i was talking about earlier so that's for that that's wireless and of course i've got my nice little setup over here uh you know, I have my, you know, it's a little messy just because I've been doing a lot of stuff recently. But if you look right here, this is, I've got a little uh, wire sock that goes and it kind of hides all of the, the wires and stuff like that all the way across. Kind of split off like this. That way everything looks just neat and tidy, you know. Uh, did a nice blue effect. I thought that was pretty neat. And if you look up there, I've got most of those bulbs unscrewed because I don't really need them. Not, you know, during the day I open up the curtains and I've got plenty of light coming in from the front. Um, anyways, got another AP here. About to swap out the other AP with this one to give it a little more juice. But uh, that was actually defective until I was able to get in there and redo the firmware on it to fix it. So now it's good to go. Um, it's working. So I just need to hook it up. So this is my, you know, my room where I spend most of my time doing my work. Uh, you know, I do a lot of Aloha support for a bunch of our stores uh, across the nation so stores from california to 
New York, basically, from West Coast to East Coast. And uh, do a lot of remote support for stores. Also, lots of firewall switches, APs, configurations like that. So I'll dabble in everything, SD-WAN, you name it, I do it all. But uh, anyways, so that was kind of a, just a, a little brief, you know, setup on how all that goes. And uh, hopefully this gives you guys a, a few ideas. You know, these, these socks, this is a, it's kind of like a nylon material. It feels real soft, kind of. But I mean, it just, man, it makes that look so neat, you know, because your wires are dangling all over the place. So it's actually, anyways, um, I uh, hope this helps anybody who's out there trying to do some of their setups and stuff. I will have another video on how I ran and set up the antenna, and hopefully this will help you guys. Um, and I'll call it quits on this. If you have any questions or comments, please go ahead and provide those below, and I'll try to respond to you as best as I can. This is KG5IN, and I'll have to say 73s. Talk to y'all soon.